If you're unfamiliar, this is Charlie Kirk, and he's the leader of a group called TPUSA, also known as Turning Points USA. It's a conservative group that goes around to college campuses and attempts to bring young Republicans into the party, you bring young people into the Republican tent, if you will. Comparable to the Hitler Youth. I think they're really, really similar in kind of the things that they teach and talk about and, and that kind of thing. Anyway, Charlie Kirk has had some things to say recently about the fact that Donald Trump's house, Mar-a-Lago, was searched by the FBI for classified slash SCI documents, the highest level of security documents that you can have. Not even supposed to leave a fortified bunker. And Donald Trump walked right out the front door with them. Deeply disturbing stuff that he even had them. Charlie Kirk decided to defend Donald Trump's decision to steal classified top secret documents from the government. What, what he was doing with them? Who knows? Charlie Kirk doesn't care. Listen to what he had to say. This is the propaganda angle that people are choosing to go with to defend Donald Trump's truly horrific decision to steal documents from the U.S. government and do who knows what. Raids must be met with raids. State attorneys generals that are Republican have to authorize raids against Soros groups, BLM, Planned Parenthood, the Alphabet Mafia, groomers, chemical castration of children now. Here's why. A hundred facilities should be raided by, raid by the next week. Find them. You trying to tell me there's not a hundred criminal organizations that are aiding and abetting people across the southern border? La Raza, we know them. They publicized it. I'm not. Okay, so that's a lot. Charlie Kirk, like I said, he's basically the leader of the equivalent of the Hitler Youth today. His answer to a legal search on Donald Trump's house is to send SWAT teams, raid organizations that are largely innocent in all of this, just LGBT groups. I mean, he listed like a billion different people. Anybody that the right doesn't like, basically. Send SWAT teams in and raid them. That's that's his plan. Notice he used the word raid. That implies that it's a SWAT team to me. That's not what happened to Trump. It was just a search. And Trump wasn't even there. He was in New York City giving deposition in a civil suit, I believe, that, that he's facing from the city of New York. Anyway, that's a deeply disturbing perspective to take. This guy... This guy is viewing the Trump FBI search in a propagandistic way. This is what the right does. They take something, they take some event, they blow it completely out of proportion, and then they claim that they want a proportional response. Okay, This is a legal search to recover documents that had been stolen from the U.S. government. Donald Trump wasn't even there. They just went in and got the documents. They organized the search with the Secret Service people that were there, I believe. They let them in. They went through their stuff, and they got what they wanted, and they left. It was not a raid. Donald Trump didn't wasn't staring down the barrel of a gun through all of this. But Charlie Kirk's propagandistic framing is it was a full-blown raid executed on Donald Trump. So they go in with guns and they get him on the ground and put his hands behind his back and cuff him and put him in a corner and hold a gun to his head and scream at him to tell him where the, blah, 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 you know, whatever other thing they do in a raid. That's how Charlie Kirk is framing it. And he's also framing it like it was an unjustified and unwarranted raid. No, it was actually, there was a search warrant signed off by a judge. Everything was completely above board. Charlie Kirk wants full-blown SWAT raids with no justifications on their political enemies. That's what they do. They take a situation, they blow it out of proportion, and propagandize about it and frame it in this terrible, awful way, and then they say they want a proportional response. That's how things are escalating out of control. And Charlie Kirk is the catalyst for how a lot of this is spiraling. Them, They publicized it. I'm not saying you have to arrest them. Just raid them. Find out what you find. Why? 
Okay, find out what you find. This is a blatant violation of people's Fourth Amendment rights, I think, the right against unreasonable search and seizure. There is no reason to raid any of the groups that Charlie Kirk mentioned. He's blatantly saying to take away their constitutional rights to hurt them for searching Donald Trump's house for documents that he stole. It gets worse than this. This is not even the worst of it yet. Just wait. That will all of a sudden make them and their internal chatters. Guys, you were so stupid. You read Trump. Now they're coming after us. Good. Now you know there's a price to this. Yeah. So here's the thing. This is interesting. Donald Trump broke the law blatantly and brazenly and didn't care. The FBI requested these top secret documents back from the guy. And he sent documents back to them in March, but didn't send all of them. And they knew that there were some missing. They gave him every opportunity to return it, and he refused. Charlie Kirk is framing this like there's absolutely no reason for this to happen. And he wants people to think that there's a price to this. Well, yeah, we know there's a price to this. We know that there's a political cost to searching Donald Trump or to charging the guy with a crime or whatever else. But that's the thing. We have to. If democracy is to survive in the U.S., Everybody, every single person must be subject to the law. There can't be anybody that's above the law. That's how democracy works. We must ensure that everybody faces justice no matter how high up the food chain or how low on the food chain. Does not matter. At this point, it feels like the U.S. is on a path that democracy is crumbling in the U.S. at this moment, and Donald Trump and his followers and the congressmen who love him to death are accelerating its demise. And every time we try to do something, every time the left makes a move at all, it's leveraged to accelerate us down that path even further. So Donald Trump brazenly broke the law brazenly stole documents, brazenly tried to get fake electors into overturn democracy on January 6th, brazenly whipped a crowd into a blood frenzy on January 6th and tried to get him to take hostages at the Capitol building, similar to the Night of Glass in 1930s Germany. So that was him trying to destroy democracy. When we respond to that, by investigating or by charging him or by searching or whatever else, he uses that information to accelerate us down a path faster of the destruction of democracy. That's a bad thing objectively, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. In fact, in my opinion, it means we absolutely should, without a shadow of a doubt, do it. Charge him with the crimes that he has committed. If we are going to live in a democracy, nobody can be above the law. I understand that charging him with stuff may accelerate the process, may make it worse, may be used against us or whatever else by Donald Trump. We don't live in a democracy unless everybody is accountable, period. Nobody can be above the law. So I I get what Charlie Kirk is saying here. He's, He's basically saying, if you charge Trump with a crime or if you search him or anything at all that you do, we're going to do it to you even worse. Okay, I get that. I get that they are going down the path and and they're going to accelerate us down even harder when we try to hold anyone accountable. That's what we have to do anyway. I don't care. We have to. We have to hold people accountable. I don't know if you guys have heard of Judge Jeanine Pirro. She's a Fox News opinion something or other. She used to be a a judge, apparently. It blows my mind that she used to be a judge. But she went on her show and completely lost her mind over Donald Trump being searched also. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Until proven otherwise. And I agree with that. But your speculation, I just think, is is just... I don't think it's speculation at all. You do not. You do not break into a house. Okay, they didn't break into a house. From my understanding, they were let into the house by Secret Service because they were coordinating the raid. But even if they hadn't, if they did break in, it was perfectly legal and above board. It was signed by a judge and it was FBI agents executing a search warrant. A complete misrepresentation right off the bat. 
house of a guy that you've been working with for nine months that you have to admit has been cooperating with you for presidential records? No. Can I okay, so let me add a little bit of information to that lore she just dropped on us. Donald Trump had been working with the FBI. Basically, when Donald Trump left the Oval Office, he walked out the door with like 20 boxes of classified documents that were never even supposed to leave a bunker in the White House. They weren't supposed to be in the general area of the White House. They were supposed to be in a bunker there, okay? Donald Trump took these documents out of the bunker in the White House, already a no-no, and then took them from the White House to his Mar-a-Lago estate, an even bigger no-no. When the Department of Justice found out that he had done that, they gave him an opportunity to return them. They subpoenaed him for the documents. I, I don't remember how many he took, like 26 boxes or something of documents. He took it all with him. They subpoenaed him for the documents. He turned over 18 of them, I think, and then he was left with 12. That math might not be quite right. I don't know the exact number, but that's the idea. He took a certain number of boxes, turned them over to the Department of Justice, but he kept some. And the ones that he kept were extremely sensitive, extremely sensitive, like nuclear weapons plans and, and all kinds of other stuff. So when the Department of Justice realized he didn't give those documents back like he said he was going to and that he still had top secret slash secret compartmented information documents, TSSCI documents in his house, in his pool room next to the fucking towels, they sent a recovery team in to retrieve them. That's what happened. So yeah, they worked with him that entire time and he refused to comply with the law. And now he's being investigated under espionage. So that's how it goes. I'm sorry, Janine. For presidential records? No. Can I ask you a question? No. I'm going to answer your question. Yes, ma'am. And you do not do that and have guys with AR-15 and women, I might add, at the front of Mar-a-Lago at, at, in a situation like this where the man's about to announce for president if he's going to run for president. Wait, how does she know that? That's weird, right? Nobody had heard if Donald Trump is going to announce that he's going to run for president yet. Kind of a weird thing to bust out just out of the middle of nowhere. And aside from that, Donald Trump wasn't even there. He was in New York City in Manhattan at Trump Tower or something like that. Judge Janine Pirro is trying to draw a vicious, ugly picture for you. Kind of like what happened to Breonna Taylor, you know? She's trying to draw that picture. She's trying to make Donald Trump look like what happened to Breonna Taylor. She's trying to make it seem as though Trump is being persecuted when Trump is the one that broke the law. Absolutely disgusting, dude. Well, here's where it gets really interesting, okay? So a whole bunch of people have been coming out of the woodwork, all kinds of different politicians of, of all sorts, coming up with really interesting propagandistic framing for this whole situation. The person that we're watching up here on screen this is mark wayne mullen one one name mark wayne that's his name mark wayne what a name anyways he's a representative a republican from oklahoma district two i think he's a state representative i'm not really sure anyway he went up there to talk about the the search basically and, and completely lose his mind over it so listen to his really interesting propagandistic framing here I understand you guys probably heard about the FBI search to death by now, but examining the propaganda methods that these people use is so fascinating to me. I, I, I want to point out the double standard here, too. You know, we, we, we saw that the, this media frenzy about supposedly classified information, where was this same media frenzy when... There was 33,000 classified emails on a server in a bathroom with Hillary Clinton. Why didn't they raid that bathroom? Okay, wow, that's fascinating. 33, wait, did he say 33,000 or 33 million? Same media frenzy when there was 33,000. Okay, 33,000, got it. Well, first of all, emails will not contain documents as sensitive as the ones that Donald Trump had because these documents will under no circumstances ever touch the internet. That's how sensitive they were. There will never be a photograph of them, and they will never be on the internet. Second, what do you mean, where is the media frenzy over Hillary Clinton's email? Are you kidding me? 
the media frenzy was so bad at the time that we just started calling it buttery males. Buttery males. They talked about Hillary Clinton so much and her email server and everything else that people came up with a phrase, buttery males, to refer to it. It was ridiculous. It was all over everything. The FBI investigated top to bottom. And again, I just want to make this clear, the documents Trump had would never be on an email server under any circumstances because they are that sensitive. Classified emails on a server in a bathroom with Hillary Clinton. Why didn't they raid that bathroom? Dude, I don't even know what he's talking about fully. Like, it, it, they're in an echo chamber where they repeat the same phrases to each other over and over and over again, and they just go in circles and eat themselves alive with anger and hate and everything else. And they all kind of understand what each other are talking about, but nobody on the outside has any idea what they're referring to. Email server in a bathroom? What? What are you talking about? I don't get it. Why do they work with her to find out a time, a date, and what documents they could and couldn't see? Do they do the same thing here? Yes, they did. See, this is how propaganda works. Pretend that he's the most persecuted person alive. Pretend that other people have been treated fairly, but he wasn't. Or pretend that things were skewed in favor of this other person when they shouldn't have and they're giving him no grace. But you know what I find particularly interesting about this framing? It's like they're excusing what happened with Hillary Clinton. Like they don't even care anymore. They're fine with that. They're okay with Trump taking classified documents home with him and putting them in the pool house next to the towels. They're okay with Hillary Clinton having an email server. That's how it's like being presented here. Would you vote for Hillary Clinton now? Is that how okay with the situation you are this guy and others lost their minds over the hillary stuff when it was honestly completely unjustified at the time it was just a fear and propaganda campaign but they're excusing it with donald trump this is the hypocrisy this is how it works this is the hypocrisy and propaganda techniques that they're using with trump with president trump of course they did before we continue, I just wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. Or you can check out my Telltale Unfiltered channel. I go through long-form, unhinged sermons from all kinds of people, from Hank Koneman to Greg Locke to Jehovah's Witnesses. So give it a look. Links are in the description. Okay, now back to the video. This is where it gets kind of interesting, in my opinion. This is a TV show called The Water Cooler on Real America's Voice. Real America's Voice, as far as I can tell, kind of operates like InfoWars a little bit, operates a little bit like True News with Rick Wiles or Lindell, like frankspeech.tv or whatever. It operates similarly to that in that it's set up kind of like a news website that has clips on YouTube and Rumble and all over the place. But I think they're a little bit bigger than the aforementioned ones. I think Real America's Voice is pretty substantial, pretty well known. And The Water Cooler is a TV show that has a lot of pretty famous people on, honestly, really famous people. This one came out early August 2022. They're talking about the Trump search on Mar-a-Lago also. Listen to this. Of course there are satanic cults that are running this. Of right. course there's child abuse. Of course there's everywhere in the right, government. And right. guess what? The mainstream media is protecting them too, and that's why she feels the need to ask him these questions. Well, guess what? Yeah. Trump wouldn't, he, he would not basically say that that wasn't true because he knows it's true. Mm -hmm. And he knows that, and he even said it himself, he was basically supporting QAnon by saying, hey, I hear they're against me. so am I. Mm -hmm. Because he knows, and that was another hint he was dropping to us. Yeah. A lot of people are saying, yeah, we, we knew that, that those parts, but guess what? These are, this is all part of the puzzle that I'm trying to put together here. Well, Please put it together for me, lay it out. Which is that the deep state, mm -hmm. you know, when you hear the word deep state, replace it with Illuminati. They're basically the same. Well, Which is that the deep state, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately this past raid of Mar-a-Lago, it's a threat. Right. It's a threat because they don't want him to expose the that he knows about. Right. And that's what impeachment was about. That's what the Russia hoax was about. Mm -hmm. That's what every single, that's what January 6th was about. That's what 
Okay, January 6th was a legitimate problem that Donald Trump legitimately broke laws that day. The Russia collusion story, that was not a hoax. That was real. That's why Paul Manafort went to jail and many, many others. Lots of people went to jail for that. Yeah, the impeachments that Donald Trump faced, those were both 100% legitimate and real. These people live in a fantasy land. But this is a good indication, like what we've been hearing, that the right generally is moving in a QAnon direction. I mean, that's what she was just talking about. Like, there are people in the government who are trying to uh, kidnap people, and Trump is saving them, and it's just ridiculous. And they orchestrated this big raid on his house to prevent him from releasing information about the people that they kidnapped and all this other stuff. It's sad, honestly. Like, these people really do live in a fantasy land. They really are completely disconnected from reality. They have a, a completely alternate set of facts they operate off of a totally different set of information than the rest of the world does. And it blows me away. That's what the Russia hoax was about. Mm -hmm. That's what every single, that's what January 6th was about. That's why they planted all those people from the FBI there. That's right. Because they wanted. Just what do you even say to this stuff? What do you even say? How do you respond to this stuff? To make Trump look out, to look like he's some domestic terrorist, like he's some insurrectionist. Right. It was a threat. It was a threat from the deep state. Right. They're coming after him, and it's because they don't want him to expose the past. And you know what? He hasn't really yet. He hasn't. No, He's no, dropped really hints, hasn't. but he hasn't fully exposed them yet. What will be interesting mm -hmm. is to see if in 2024, if he runs again, or even if he doesn't run again, mm -hmm. if he does decide to do that. I can't see a situation in which Trump does not run for 2024. I am very, very sure that he's going to. In fact... I'm pretty convinced that he was planning on announcing that he's going to run on August 8th, 2022. The reason I think that's because that was basically the day after all of the major primaries. And I think he was planning on coming out and announcing it after the primaries. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, people live in a fantasy land, man. I'm telling you. They live in a fantasy land. And clawing them back to reality is an uphill battle. Is it possible? I don't know. This is Stu Peters talking to a, I believe it's Anthony Sabatini. I think that he's a candidate for Congress or he's an active congressman. I'm not sure which exactly. He's somehow related to Congress, either candidate or active. Listen to what they have to say about the Mar-a-Lago raid. Check this out. The first and easy thing to do is pass a law saying none of our sheriffs, none of our police, none of our state law enforcement is going to work with them, communicate with them, or recognize any of their authority. If you do that, if you stop tax collectors, clerks of the court, county, cities, everybody from operating with them, communicating with them, you leave them in the dark. We need to do that immediately. I called to do that for the Capitol Police months ago. That's something that is a new idea in the Republican Party, but it's an obvious thing we need to do. The second thing is the much more controversial idea, and that's using nullification, using the Tenth Amendment to say if a federal agency is operating and performing so-called law enforcement functions, which is what they're pretending what they, it is that they did when they raided Mar-a-Lago, they have to gain state permission. If they do not do that, we should treat them as trespassers and arrest them. If the FBI is going to try to haunt uh, Donald Trump and arrest him at Mar-a-Lago, which I believe they're going to try to do in the next few months if we, if we don't stand up, we need to physically prevent these rogue federal agencies from doing that. And that means using our law enforcement. If we don't have agents that are willing to do that, recruit new ones, but use the state power against federal power. It's obvious. To summarize, what this congressman or congressional candidate is saying is states need to stop recognizing the authority of the federal government. That's what he's saying. This is, in my opinion, the precursor to a civil war. By refusing to recognize federal authority, that's the precursor to secession and the precursor to a civil war. I believe that that is the goal of the right at this point. Now, if you're not convinced by that yet, let me show you one more thing that may just convince you. There's this thread on Twitter by somebody called Living Blue Texas, also known as Shell Seas. They have like 20,000 followers on there. And they basically created a thread that's hundreds of videos long, hundreds of tweets under it of TikTokers uh, or TikTok videos of people 
who are prepared to go to war for Donald Trump right now and want it to happen now and are pissed off that it's not. Just listen to a couple of them. Check this one out. This has 1.3 million views on it. Well, hey. Don't mind me. Just getting ready for my IRS audit. I know this is about to come. Listen. They're freaking out because Biden said that he's hiring 80,000 new IRS agents. Uh, I'm all for that. I'm in favor of it. They believe that the IRS agents are going to be used to declare martial law or something. I don't even know. But they're freaked out about it. Who knows why? I'm just like you. I've seen what happened to Trump. Yeah, it's go time. Everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. The Democrat Nazis have gone too far. Just look at what they've said in the Senate in the past. Look at all the ammunition the IRS is buying up. Look at the new classification they come out with with uh, the MBEs. I don't know what he's talking about. I I tried to figure it out, but I'm not in these right-wing circles, these right-wing echo chambers. Like, they always spread fear to each other as much as humanly possible. This is why they vote in the numbers that they do, because they're all scared shitless. They think the Nazi Democrats are coming after them to take their guns and their lives and their everythings. I have no idea what he means by MVEs. This is like a fabricated fear doesn't exist in the real world, only exists in this guy's head and the heads of his friends, his prepper friends, who are also trying to start a war. I fit that description quite nicely. Yeah, if you followed me on my other account, follow me on this one as well. Don't let them shut me up. Every time I come across one of you who have lost your account due to the Democrat Nazis on the Democrat Nazi app, I follow you. Oh, by the way, he's obviously talking about civil war and he's got guns sitting in the background. Fantastic, right? There are a couple of others. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of these videos, hundreds of them. But I just wanted to look at a few of them. Just look at this one. Check this one out. Dear Combat Area Commandment Generals, there's 12 of you guys. You are witnessing open treason against your country. Donald Trump's mansion being searched for documents that he stole, top secret documents he stole from the government, is the U.S. government committing treason? Not Donald Trump, but, like, the FBI? We the people ask you to do something about it. Now, I know a couple things that most Americans don't know. There's only two people that give you orders. Secretary of Defense and the President of the U.S. are the two people that control the military. Secretary of Defense, the President of the United States, who was known to have committed treason when we all found about, out about it during the Trump-Ukrainian phone call. No. What is he even talking about? See, this is what I'm talking about. He lives in a fantasy land. He lives in a delusional world, disconnected from reality, uses an alternate set of facts that nobody else is using, except for other people who want to start a civil war. The public has known about Biden's treason since 2019. How long have you guys known about it? Now... You combat area commanders. Eleven of you are Trump appointees. Charles Flynn, you were appointed by Biden. But I know you're still a loyalist. We have 12 generals that are loyal to Trump. The Secretary of State and the President of the United States are the two only people that could tell them what to do. They run the whole military. What I am getting at, combat area commanders, there's only two 
people that stand in the way of bringing freedom to your country. Please bring justice. That's funny. I'm sorry. This is a serious situation, but <laughs> that's funny, man. Uh, I really like that, how he jumped forward. <laughs> Getting at combat area commanders. That's funny. That's really funny, uh, but sad. <laughs> you gotta laugh. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. Anyway, hundreds, guys. Hundreds. Hundreds of videos like this. I'm almost 62 years old, and I admit that I've thought about different ways I might die throughout my life. You know, different scenarios, different diseases, different things. But there's one thing that I can assure you never crossed my mind. And that is that I might die engaged in some sort of battle with my fellow man. Never even gave it any, never gave it any thought until now. They live in a fantasy land, guys. They live in a fantasy land where Democrats are possessed by demons and they're trying to take your children and turn them to Satan. Is there a new civil war brewing right now is my question. And I'm asking seriously. Do you think that a new civil war is going to start? Here's my opinion. I don't think a new civil war is going to start. I think we're going to see a progressively higher uptick in domestic terrorism. I think we're just going to see like riots break out all over the place N night of glass style from world war ii germany that that kind of thing i think that's what we can expect i don't think there's ever going to be a moment in time when trump orders people to organize get together form a militia and attack a target i mean it did kind of happen on january 6th but it wasn't really like that it wasn't organized per se it was just a, a gigantic riot that Trump organized, right? I'm talking like full-blown military. I don't see Trump organizing a full-blown military and pointing them at a target. That's what it would take for a civil war to form. That's why I believe we're just going to see an uptick in domestic terrorism and riots and things like that. That's what I expect in the future. If you disagree with me on that, let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist. Oh! I just switched screens, and look, I've got buttery mails up here still. I think I'm going to leave that up, but I do need to search for something else. Brandon Kramer, as a straight dude that follows you, I'm not sure how I feel about the buttery mails. I've always loved your content, but now I think I'm developing a crush on you, too. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, buttery mails will get anybody, and that's why the Hillary email scandal was such a big deal because people were talking about buttery mails so often it just you know it couldn't get buttery mails out of their head it's a problem you can send me some of those buttery mails though okay i appreciate that drake i'll keep that in mind <laughs> once i get my hands on my own buttery mails i'll sell i'll send some to you do mails get more buttery than this this is pretty buttery the caliber of buttery in these mails is off the charts and that that's what hillary clinton gets serves her right that's what we all get because of buttery mails. Thank you, Hillary Clinton. We're going to have to put the buttery mails down for now. We'll come back to the buttery mails, though.